Jesus so that you can be saved. There's no salvation in any other. I don't care what you've been taught as a doctrine. It's irrelevant. Doctrines don't save you. The power of God does. You need to know the scriptures and the power of God. Because the power of God gives life to those scriptures to bring transformation to your, to the, it renews your mind. <laughs> it renews you in the spirit of your mind so that you can walk as an overcomer and not always be beat up, tossed to and fro by every wind and wave and doctrine of men and doctrines of demons that are there to confuse you. It's crystal clear up here in the heavenly places in Christ. There's no confusion. I mean, <laughs> we only hear one voice. And he comes through many people. He comes through many situations. He comes through the scriptures. He comes through nature. He comes through children. He comes through pastors. He comes through anyone that he chooses to speak through. Whoever has ears to hear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying. He comes through music. <clears throat> How do you hear, though? You know, let the Spirit of God sharpen you. Let the Word of God divide your soul and your spirit so you can discern the difference between soulishness and Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Well, I actually, the reason, <laughs> Holy Spirit, the reason I made a video today is I just, I sat down and I just, you know, threw this camera on as a little test thing. I wanted to sit on my couch and just talk about the kingdom and did a little bit of worship before that, you know. Every day we gotta worship God every day. If you wanna if you wanna be filled every day, just worship God every day. <laughs> Some days I forget. I'm I'm guilty, man. But uh it's just a it's the perfect habit. Because that's who he seeks, is worshipers who will worship him in spirit and in truth so that he can fill them with life more abundantly and that life more abundantly will cascade through their life into the atmosphere, to those around them, to their neighbors, uh, to whoever, into your daily conversation. You can't help but talk about the kingdom because that's, all your mind, that's where your mind is, that's where your heart is. And that even pretty soon, that's where our body, I mean, I feel the shaka, you know, I feel the glory and the peace. And But pretty soon, you know, this, I've been asking God, you know, lately, God, I just want to drink so much of the new wine, be so plastered that it breaks this old wine skin and I have my new body. <laughs> just drink so much of the new wine by faith. Holly, I'll just take my sippy cup and I dip in the river of life right now. And it just breaks my, <laughs> breaks the wine skin and spills that wine into the world and drowns the world in glory. <laughs> Hallelujah. Because, holy man, that, thing, that drink just worked. Did you feel that? <laughs> I did. Woo. You know, there is something to actually drinking by faith, man. Wow. Grab your sippy cup. You know, those who come to God must believe that He is a rewarder that of, to those who diligently seek Him. Grab your sippy cup as a child of God. <laughs> and just dip it in the river of life. Whoever is thirsty, let him come and drink. Jesus said in the book of Revelation, so I dip my sippy cup into that river, Lord. <laughs> and I'm thirsty. You said if I knew who you are and the gift of God, I would just ask you. And you would have given me living water. Cheers. <laughs> man, my lips feel numb, man. <laughs> wow. I don't even care what a human mind thinks anymore. What is man that you should even take a thought for him, man? You know, God looks at the heart. <laughs> Not so much what our earth suit is doing, but what the heart is doing within that earth suit. He's really concerned. <laughs> God stares intently at our hearts. Even the hearts of the wicked. 
because he knows that if they could just see, if they could just open, if the veil of Satan would just come off of their eyes and they could see, they could taste and see the living God, they would tr- surely turn from wickedness, darkness, and depression, anxiety, fear, and fretting, and all that torture that the enemy has placed in their path, and then to come into the bliss, come into the wine cellar, come into the, you know, the treasures of eternal life, come into the manifest presence of God, come into the peace, come into the, the life. All they have to do is just, it's like you turn, if Jesus said, if I be lifted up, I will draw all men into to me. Like just like Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, and whoever looked at that serpent, they were healed. And the snakes or whatever stopped biting, whatever, you know, stopped biting. I can't remember what exactly happened there, but in their rebellion or something like that, they, like, they just had to look at the serpent on a stick, which is basically saying Jesus Christ crucified for their freedom. And then whoever looked up at the serpent on the stick that Moses held up, uh, they, were, they were healed. And it's the same thing with me. That was the first vision that God ever gave me. It's like, well, first one that really impacted me very deeply is like I saw Jesus Christ on the cross dripping, dripping water and blood upon me. And it like it came as a drop of blood and landed on my eye and drip rolled off as a tear into the natural realm. It's like the the spirit realm and the natural realm were in perfect sync and it just the love that went through my, the emotions, the spiritual impact, it just changed me forever. I looked up and I saw my Savior, what He did for me personally. And then this woman landed at my feet and just flapped her cheeks, laughing in the joy of the Lord. Just, <laughs> it was contagious, man. It just went on to me. and. We were in like this revival for like an hour straight of just bliss. And you cannot manufacture that. I would go and I would tell other people, I had no idea that that there was these religious mindsets. I was oblivious. I was a new believer and I was very passionate about God. I would go to like these these carnival things and I see crit anybody any religion didn't matter. I would go talk to them about Jesus, man. <laughs> I saw these people with like banners that said Christian Science or something like that. Christian, I don't even know what it was. I was like, man, right on. I'm a Christian too. And I was like, and I'm like, wow. So you guys are. What are you guys doing here? And they're handing out these pamphlets and stuff. And I'm like, oh, cool. Uh, what is this? And I took their pamphlet and I put it in my pocket. It's like, so how many people have got saved? You know, come in here. It's like, oh, no one's gotten saved. I'm like, how long have you been here? Oh, we've been here for a few days. And I'm like, oh, so no one's no one's really got saved. Yeah, we're just kind of like here to share the light. And I'm like, oh, cool, me too, man. Let me tell you what happened. I was sitting in a meeting one time, and this man was like, I thought he was a Catholic. And I was like, oh, no, I've been through that. It was really boring, and there's no glory on it. And he had this smoke thing. And he, like, for real, like in the service, he had this smoke thing. And he said that when the high priest... Uh, of the year, he would go once a year through the veil, and uh, and he had to have the smoke thing so that God wouldn't kill him. Because <laughs> he'd go to the most holy place, or the holy place, or whatever holy place. And uh, as I'm telling this, like they're like, oh, yeah, yeah, and they're trying to change the subject. My, I had a friend beside me who just wanted to argue and debate with them because I guess he had a religious spirit, but I didn't know. It's like, anyways, yeah. And so I was sitting there, he was talking about this smoke thing and that you can have an encounter with God today because Jesus rent that veil in half. That curtain was torn in half and we can come into the Holy of Holies. You know, and if, you know, that bell stopped ringing, that, you know, that priest would die. It wasn't enough smoke. The requirements weren't met. So, and, uh, it's like some of you are, he, and then, then the guy who was preaching to me said, some of you are inches away from an encounter with God. And I saw, I felt people start in front of me started crying. 
I'm like, whoa, I've never seen this in church before. And then the atmosphere just shifted from just natural to like, whoa, there's something came in the room. And then I'm looking at them and like, well, yeah, you probably like, everyone's having an emotional experience, you know, this manipulation of your emotions and stuff like that. I, I, don't, I sure was having, a, I wasn't having an emotional experience yet. <laughs> but then people behind me were crying. <laughs> and like, I look back and I look at the pastor who brought me. He wasn't crying and I wasn't crying, but I started feeling really uncomfortable. But I felt this peace come. And then I felt, I saw, like I went into a vision and I saw all my sins flashing before my eyes. The motives why I was going to church was to look at girls. I saw myself lusting after the girls. And then I felt like Holy Spirit was saying to me personally, this is blocking you from me. This is blocking you from experiencing the peace that you feel right now. And I started weeping. I knew where they were crying. I went into the Holy of Holies. I ran my fingers along the ripples of that curtain. And I started weeping because I saw my sin. And it wasn't that... It was, wasn't God, wasn't God... God wasn't mad at me. It was like God was like, There's so much more, son. All you... This is blocking you from encountering me in such wonderful ways where you can experience my presence like this now, every day. And I started weeping because I saw that it was separating God from one of his children, from him trying to hug his kid. And it broke my heart. And I began weeping. And then they said to me, they said, yeah, you're just having an emotional experience. That person's just manipulating you. And I'm like, yes, it was a very, very emotional experience when God was talking to me in the presence of God. It's like, wow, you're just imagining things in your mind. Like, wow, it was an amazing vision. Thank God for visions. I had no idea. I wasn't arguing. I didn't know that these people were religious demons. All I knew <laughs> that the religious demons were trying to shut me down. All I knew was like, God is awesome. And you need to know Him too. Holy Spirit, you feel that, man? <laughs> Glory. Wow. I was just releasing the testimony of Jesus. I didn't care what a fallen mind thought. Darkened minds are irrelevant unless they're releasing the Spirit. I won't pay attention to darkness anymore. If you pay attention to darkness, you're making like a tunnel for that darkness to enter through and to, to defile your mind with, with darkness, confusion, and stuff like that. If there's no spirit in the words, it's just human words. It's just human reasoning. It's just knowledge of good and evil. And so I would just release this stuff and, and I walk away and... Uh, Maybe they needed to get bored again. I didn't even know anything. I'm just a brand new believer. And I would go into like street churches. I'd walk in like uh, I didn't know what was going on. I just saw like people there were singing to Jesus. So I thought this is normal. I didn't know I, I broke a bunch of protocol. And I like I said, if anyone's here, you want to give a quick testimony? And I went up there. I grabbed the microphone. And I started telling them the same thing I just said here. Some of you are inches away from an encounter with God. If you need Jesus in your life, get up here in the front. I'll lay hands on you. And you can, you know, that's all I knew because I saw like Benny Hinn on TV. So I thought you have to lay hands on people and cast the devils out and, you know, lead them in a uh, sinner's prayer and heal the sick. And I did. I prayed for them. I've seen people, you know, get free. I cast devils out of people. And it was fun. I did it because it was fun. And then I got religious about it. And then I started doing like, you know, all these dead works apart from the spirit where I would, you know, drag people in wheelchairs in my own strength, yell at people and get angry at them and tell them to repent because they're a bunch of sinners and just being a demon. <laughs> you know, a lot of those people that hold those signs telling repent sinner, you know, they're just religious demons. There's no spirit life, there's no transformation, there's just debates, arguments, you know, all the fruits of Galatians 5. It's very rare that I'll ever see someone with those signs who actually has a heart after God. Very rare. How do you have authority to say that? Because I was like those people. And I knew the fruit of it. It was just debates, pride, and arrogance. 
it's doing the works of Christ in the flesh. It's like what the Pharisees did in the Old Testament, where you have to do everything according to the flesh. You don't even need Holy Spirit. You don't need God. You just have this knowledge about God, and you just try to do it the best you can in your strength. Whereas the gospel is nothing like that at all. It's like it's all God coming through a yielded vessel. And it was easily proven by my lack of fruit and my lack of joy and the lack of results of people actually getting transformed. So you grow in the fruit, you grow in peace, you grow in understanding, you grow in wisdom, counsel, might, and all that stuff. Shabbat. Um, I don't know what that is. Anyways, it's really exciting just talking about the kingdom. I hope these stories bless you. Uh, I have no other motive for making these vid videos other than just getting jacked up and uh, trying to encourage you in the bliss. Encourage you just to press into God. And, you know, you have all the God that you ever desire if you draw near to Him. Everything else is just a human excuse. You have as much God as you want. How much how much time are you pressing in? How much how much of your heart are you like pressing into God? Like do you shut off Facebook? <laughs> do you shut off YouTube? Do you shut you shut things off so you can focus one to one? Or is it just all like, you know, on the go? There is a difference, you know. I mean, I do feel the presence of God when I'm walking with him at a bus stop, you know, playing Candy Crush, listening to the audio Bible, praying in tongues. But there's also other times when I just worship Him in spirit and truth without distraction. When I go deep and deep and deep, really deep into the Holy of Holies, and I know that I'm being changed because His Kabbalah glory is sitting on me and I can't do anything else. Tears are busting out of my eyeballs, snot is hanging from my nose down to the floor. I know that rivers of living water are washing through my soul and my spirit, my body too. <laughs> it feels good. Yeah. And it's, he's available to all who make themselves available. <laughs> Hallelujah. I don't do this for any other reason other than desire that the whole body of Christ would just mature into their head. I'm still growing, like I'm some super mature person. <laughs> yeah, right, man. I feel like a baby, man. That's why I use the, some people take barrels and they, I have a sippy cup, man. <laughs> that's my, that's where I'm at. I'm just, <laughs> I'm just God's kid. I take my sippy cup and I drink freely. Oh, I let the mature people, <laughs> they, have, they do what they do. I do what I do. I just do God, man. <laughs> First thing when you wake up is in the morning, you should be like, ah, oh, Holy Spirit. <laughs> Holy Spirit, this is the day you made. I'm glad <laughs> that I get to rejoice in it. Hallelujah. Oh. Maybe I'll make another video on Keys of the King where I'll just take all the keys where God's given me stuff, breakthrough in every area. Look, the simplest key, you have the simplest key. It's Christ in you, the hope of glory. And I'll open up the door and let him out. <laughs> Fling wide your heavenly gates. You might say, well, how do I open up the door? <laughs> Faith, praise and worship. Let the fruit of your lips give thanks. You know, the fruit of your lips. <laughs> Whoa, shut up. Sometimes just worshiping God. I, I've, the, mo all the, the deepest encounters that I've ever had with God all came out of a place of just worshiping Him. Just searching for the manifest presence of God. That's it. I was just looking for the presence of God. And uh, and I would go into these visions, because that's how God talks. He speaks through visions. He speaks through dreams. He speaks through rhema words out of the Bible. He speaks, <laughs> There's unlimited ways that God speaks to you. I mean, one time, my name, Radical Man, one time I was just sitting at a table with my friend, just this girl that, you know, she was my friend. And uh, she was sitting across from me. And we went, as soon as we went to this outreach, there was like, I could feel the angelic activity 
in the region. We just, right? You feel the angel. It feels different than the Kapad, Wadis. Like sometimes they carry that, but it's like, it's different. You know, you just know that they're angels. <laughs> You're not to worship the angels. Like, duh. Come on. We, don't, we read the Bible. We know it's wrong. <laughs> We worship our Father in heaven, hallelujah, in Christ Jesus, hallelujah. But anyways, we went through realms of angels. We know we're going to have like a lot of glory. And so we sat down at this, uh, I don't know, this table. There's all the other voices. All the young people are there. This youth retreat, again, as a brand new believer. This is where God gave me the name Radical Man. It wasn't given to me through man. And I sat down at a table. And there was a girl in front of me, and I heard all the voices. And we were, I can't even remember what we were talking about, but it was like a crowd of voices, just blah, 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 everyone's talking. And all of a sudden, all the voices went, and they're all very far into the distance. I can still hear them talking, but it was like, it's like they were like a mile away. And then I hear God say, tell her I love her. And I'm like, in this manifest presence of God with all these voices far away. And then all of a sudden, and I'm back and all the voices are back. And the presence of God kind of lifts off of me. And I'm staring at this girl in the face. And then fear strikes me. Remember Jesus said, as soon as the seed of the kingdom comes, the enemy comes to take away that seed. You know, 30, 60, 100 fold, the enemy comes in. To try to like choke the seed, to, you know, just distract you, put fear in you. Every time you, usually every time you get a prophetic word from God, it's going to be challenged by the enemy, because he knows when you release that word, life is going to blossom through that person. It's going to destroy his works of death. And so I'm staring at this girl, and I thought the enemy whispered in my ear, "Don't tell her that God said that. That's my. That's not even God. That's just your imagination." That's just, <laughs> that's just, you, you're making up stuff. She, you're just going to look prideful. She's just going to think that you're trying to like make a move on her. You know, you're trying to look all spiritual. She's going to see right through it. So I, I check it out and I didn't say anything. I, I listened to the devil more than God. What a mistake. But God saw that and he rebuked me. Because that evening we went to the worship meeting and it was so glorious, the presence of God, we were dancing, smashing drums, it was so free. The woman who was leading the meeting, uh, she grabbed my elbow and we ran out of the church. How prophetic is that? <laughs> I locked, arm with this, locked arms with this pastor, we ran out of the church, just hammered in the Holy Ghost, laughing, running out of the church walls, out into the open, we're all just tanked <laughs> and we come into the meeting and then I let her go and we're just dancing I've never seen this person before that day she doesn't know who I am I don't know who she is I don't even think I knew her name I still don't even know her name she's my Facebook friend now I found her afterwards but and then it's just like okay all this everything settled down the presence of God just lands up resting we're sitting in the peace and she's quiet. She's not talking. She's not preaching. This is something you should learn, and I should learn too. And she's like, some of you are wondering why I'm not preaching or, any, or doing anything right now. That's because I'm waiting on the Lord. I only do what I see my father doing and say what he says. wonder where she heard that before. <laughs> so we, we sat uncomfortably for about five minutes. <laughs> Where's the sermon? You know, we are stuck in our ways, our natural ways, are stuck in our protocol, our human protocol. And she was in the kingdom. She was in the in the spirit. And then all of a sudden, she says, "Okay, everybody, line up." And we all we just all got in a line. And then she starts laying hands on people, just fire, touch. And then she came to me. She looked at me, and then she looked at the girl beside me, and then she looked at me again with fire blazing out of her eyes and said, you be the radical man that I have called you to be. And she rebuked me, and God touched my forehead. Fire went right through my entire being. I had landed on the floor. I don't take courtesy falls. That was the power of God. 
And then she said to the next person, the girl who God spoke to me about earlier in the day, oh man, I feel this so strong, I want to cry. She said, God says that he loves you. And boom, she hit the floor. That was enough for me to, like, oh, I, can, I can never, ever obey the devil again. I have to be the radical man that God has called me to be. <laughs> And then everyone started calling me Radical Man after that. I'd be sitting on a video game. Like we were we were leaving this time. We were leaving this like uh the the, ba the battlegrounds. <laughs> this this what do you call that place, man? Where you go on a retreat or whatever, there's water, it was so many prophetic, amazing things happened. So much glory, so many people, sinners, wicked kids, repenting because they got the hell scared out of them. <laughs> they got lost on the water for hours, and then they were calling up to God. <laughs> they, were, they were the most irritating sinners in the place, and they called out to God. <laughs> Hallelujah, God saw through it all, man. He's so wise. Wiser than every human being combined like just put it all on a scale all the wisdom of man and then the, the foolishness of God just steps on it and makes it look like utter ridiculous nonsense you know and then so like we're going back and I'm sitting on a video game of this girl's brothers <laughs> who basically repented that day uh, I can't even remember her name but she grabs me. It's not the same girl at the table. This is a different girl. I'm sitting on a video game. She grabs me. Come on, radical man. We're going to worship Jesus. I'm like, wait, 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 wait. And she like thrusts me into what I'm called to do. We're going to worship Jesus. Get your guitar. And so I grab my guitar. She drags me off this, the video games and thrusts me into the spirit. She like, grab your guitar. Let's sing to Jesus. Okay. That's what I was born to do. I'm a Mary. You know, I, I'm a, I'm a, I sit at his feet and I just worship him. I adore him. I pour out my off. Well, my life is a, is a love offering before his feet. She, you know, hers it was the perfume, but it's the fragrance of our hearts that he's looking for and he poured out upon it. And so I just, I grab my guitar to the car. We're sitting at the place where you take the boat and all the cars are lined up perfect acoustics all the people were there lined up who don't know Jesus man I grab my guitar and I'm for singing to Jesus loud man it was, just, it was it was triggering the demons in people you can see them glaring at us the security guard comes over you guys can't be singing these songs I'm like what's the problem we're just singing songs. Hit it one more time. Row, row, row your boat gently down the stream. They're all hammered. <laughs> verily, verily, verily. There's nothing wrong with singing songs. How old? Come on. Oh, man. So we just got, you know, it was awesome. Listen, this all came out of just pursuing God. I love God. So I'm just going to pursue Him in any way, fashion, form possible it doesn't matter my level of my growth whether I go to these meetings or whether I just sit at home and get all jacked up and tell you about them or whether I go down the streets and see people get born again and devils cast out of people it doesn't doesn't matter your location all that matters is what's located in your heart what's coming out of your mouth is it kingdom or is it human you know, if you want fruit that remains, let it be the kingdom. If, if, if it's spirit words, spend time with Holy Spirit where you get your discernment from. <laughs> you know, He leads you into all truth. The depth of your relationship with Holy Spirit is the depth of your discernment. He's the, he is your discernment. He, he's, the one, he's the revealer of truth, you know. Everything is exposed in His light. Hallelujah, man. Well, I don't know what I'm going to do now. I might just go do some more worship. I was thinking about making a really long video, but I think there's enough here to chew on. <laughs> I've given you the testimony of Jesus being the spirit of prophecy. Listen, it's as simple as, it's as, simple as this. Fling wide, you heavenly gates, and let the King of Glory come into your atmosphere. 
Come into your neighbors. Come into your friends. Come into your conversation. Instead of speaking unbelief and fretting and double-mindedness, why don't you just step out of that by faith and step into the faith of God. Step into giving the fruit of your lips, giving thanks to His name. Step into making decrees of righteousness. You know, put on an audio Bible, put on Candy Crush, your video game, and just start lining up all the candies. Just pray in tongues if you have the gift of praying in tongues. If not, just, you know, just enjoy the Bible and relax in the manifest presence of God, man. <laughs> you don't got to do nothing. You need to yield. Hallelujah. You know, He is a rewarder for those who diligently seek Him. So all it is is a heart seeking after God's own heart. You know, and then He does renew you in the spirit of your mind the more you walk with Him in that realm. There is a difference between just like walking in this realm and walking in that realm with full awareness of that realm where you actually lose awareness of this realm but you still are sort of aware of this realm, it's just hard to come back sometimes when you go that deep in the spirit. Like for worship, that's what does it for me, man. When I worship God and I go those, into those deep realms, it's hard to come back. Like what I mean is like, I mean, to have the natural mind almost like the, the your cognitive <laughs> Sometimes you just gotta lay on the floor, you know. Man, okay, we'll give some more stories. Man, this preacher dude who I've never met before, my friend met him and invited him to. I used to lead worship, like, my first year of being a Christian. He came to this religious church that we we're in where people, they didn't really want God there, they just went there because they needed their brownie points. They thought that if they went to church, they were saved. <laughs> but it's not. You go to the king of glory to be saved. <laughs> and so anyways, he invites this guy over. And uh, the intercessor says to the preacher, he's coming, yeah, God's called me to go to Canada. These people are from the U.S. Because there's a church out there he wants to release his glory. In. And he's like, wow, I'm going to a church in Canada this week. <laughs> I was like, you are? <laughs> and then they came together, and I guess it was all a God thing. And she invited, this intercessor invited the whole church just to come and pray, to intercede, to contend, to open the heavens, so that when this preacher comes, like people have open hearts to receive. Basically, it's, it's Psalms, you know, sowing in tears, reaping the harvest, bringing in the sheaves, holy, whatever. <laughs> Plowing the ground. And, uh, so, you may hit, nobody showed up. I think we went there just to, just to check on it, and there was nobody there. Nobody showed up to the prayer meeting. It was just this one faithful woman who would just pour out her heart, lay her life down so that others could be built up. She had the kingly anointing. Nobody else in that church did. All we, we were just a bunch of babies, spoiled brats, me included. And so... She contended all night, prayed all night, and then this guy comes, and and then uh, they invite me to do the worship. And uh, as soon as I, I'm, so I'm practicing the songs, I'm rehearsing, and he's like, hey, worship man, come here for a second. And like, uh, I came down there, I'm like, hi, his name was John. And uh, he's like, uh, let, me pray, let, let me pray for you, hand me your paw. And I'm, like, I'm just, okay. And he grabs my hand, and as soon as he starts praying for me, my feet start burning. And they go, the fire went all the way up to my knees. That's That was God refining my walk, because I was changed from that meeting. And I'll tell you about it in a second. And he's like, he's like, do you think God's going to show up today? <laughs> and in my religious mindset, I was like, God's already here, man. He's like, yeah. He looks at me and smiles. He's like, how are your feet doing over there? I'm like, they're on fire. <laughs> He's like, doesn't that feel good? It's kind of like drugs, isn't it? Just more pure, more godly. And I thought he blasphemed right there. You can't equate God with drugs. You know, my religious mind. 
but my mind was getting purified. My walk was getting purified by the fire of God burning up all human traditions. I'm like, yeah, God's already here. It's going to be good, man. And then uh, I was like, okay, that's good, that's good. And then he kind of lets my hand go. He knows, man, this guy walks in some serious sauce. Way deeper than I've ever walked in, or am walking in. <laughs> there are people out here that you do not know about who are so much sure that their face will just explode light through them. They lay their lives down for others and contend all night long. I know the people that we see on YouTube, we get blasted, we feel the annoyance. That's great. But there's the hidden ones who have not been revealed yet that I've only seen glimpses of a handful of them. I could only hold on one hand the people that God has hidden that they are not revealed, they are not made very public, but they are out there and they are different than what I've ever seen them in church in my entire life. They walk in realms of glory that it's, it's, not, it's not common, it's not seen yet, but it is going to be seen very soon in the days, I would say even these days. Yes, in my lifetime, <laughs> you are going to see some very serious realms of glory. He would start speaking, and everyone in the place would start coughing up demons and getting deliverance. And like, okay, now you're ready for what's coming. And then waves of glory would just come through the place. People, half the congregation got caught up to heaven. Half the congregation saw, it, like I'm talking about lukewarm people who don't want to pray. They barely want God. Got caught up to heaven, smelled the fragrance of Jesus. My mom, who was always on fire, who discipled me, he's like, he's, he points at her and says, Woman, come here. God wants you to come over here. And she's like, Oh, oh. And she's like, She had to crawl to go to the preacher. And he looks at her and she is laughing, drunk, hammered drunk in the Holy Spirit. And he looks at her and he tells the whole congregation there, what God is doing here in 10 minutes, 10 years of personal, what do you call it, inner healing, what do you call that stuff that people set up? He's doing here, in, what God's doing in 10 minutes, you cannot do with 10 years of counseling. It's one on one. God was just root, she was plastered drunk in the Holy Spirit with the wine and the fragrance of God, caught up to heaven, all these amazing things where heaven showed up. Okay, who was the worker? Holy Spirit praying through that intercessor. You want fruit that remains? You need to know the Holy Spirit. This is just, wow, he just, whoa. He just came in the room a little stronger when I said that. <laughs> that this is just the beginning. I was doing the music. I would, like, for years after this, I'd weep for, like, every service, say, God, no one can stand to minister. <laughs> well, in this service, I could not stand to minister. He would be, like, during the worship, I was just like, something hit me, man. These realms of glory would just go, boom, and my stomach would explode in glory, would just go, it was like I was getting, there was an angel, like like this Mike Tyson angel would just go and explode glory. And then, but following that, holy laughter would just bust out of my face. And I'm trying to be serious. I take my job seriously when it comes to worshiping the Lord. <laughs> Here comes the fist of the angel. Boom. They are probably getting a good kick out of it. Maybe they were kicking me, I don't know. And, I'm, boom, uh, and you can hear my, you can hear my forehead boom, on the microphone and the wind from that microphone boom, over everybody. And then holy laughter would hit everybody else. And they would get plastered in the Holy Ghost from me getting plastered by the Holy Ghost. And then I was trying my hardest. So the guy, he saw that I could not do my job as the worship leader, the preacher. So he came up there. He's like, what's going on there, worship man? I was like, I'm just trying to sing to Jesus. I just, <laughs> Another wave. <laughs> and 
And then he starts releasing stuff. He starts exposing there was a witch in the meeting. He exposed the witch in the meeting. He calls out a pastor. He says, you are, you are running from God. Get up here, pastor. You need to repent tonight or get out of here. You know, kind of. <laughs> Thank God he came to the front and repented. He's like, it's true. God's called me to be a pastor, but I've been doing this and that. All the, the heavens were wide open. Everybody's soul was wide open. All the darkness was exposed for what it is. Holy Spirit is your discernment, not your brain. We discern by the Spirit of God. It is written of Jesus. He will not judge by the seeing of his eyes or the hearing of his ears, but with righteousness will he make judgment. That righteousness is the Holy Spirit, what he reveals to him. And it's the same thing with us. He's the blueprint for us. If you want to know what's going on in people's souls, just spend time with Holy Spirit. and He'll expose the things that are in darkness in them, not so you can accuse them, but so that you can intercede like that little intercessor who just cracked the heavens open for the entire group. And uh, the glory of God was manifest. I've never seen that level of glory in that place ever since that time. And I've only ever seen that level of glory a few times in my life. Actually, I'd say about two different meetings. Three meetings. And three different meetings in my, yeah, in my entire life. Maybe four. On my hands. Where it's like the heavens are so open that you can... You, no longer know anybody after the flesh, but you know them after the Spirit. Because you see them by the Spirit. And people after that, like I was totally changed. We would, like, we're all jacked up. We would line up and like, okay, let's prophesy over each other. And like someone would practice prophesying. It was like, no, that's not the Lord. That's just darkness. Another guy, he prophesied something so simple that you could barely even think this is the Lord. But it was the Lord because the Spirit was on it. You start seeing like who's actually walking with God and who's a pre-Christian or who's just a witch there to destroy the meeting try to, to manipulate people with their witchcraft so it's, it's a lot of fun walking with God I've seen a lot of glory on the street in the building at home it doesn't matter the location all that matters is where your heart is located you know where your heart is there will your treasure be also if your heart is in God and he's your treasure you're going to be in a lot of glory. You're going to be releasing a lot of glory. But if your heart is in the world and it's stuck on wor worldly things, there's not going to be any glory on your life. It's just going to be dust. It's going to be wasting your life, wasting your talents. So I would encourage you, man, just set your affections on things above and then lift them off the earth. Even if you have to take like these little five-second, five-minute detours where you just stop everything you focus back on Jesus Christ. You focus back on God with all your heart. I was singing this song today, and I felt the Holy Spirit come in the room. And then I was just doing a little pre-record on my camera, and the Holy Spirit just went, Bruh! and I watched one of my friends from Facebook, I watched one of his videos, and the Holy Spirit went, I'm just doing my everyday life, but I'm not doing it by myself. I'm just aware of his presence. By grace, nothing that I am, just desiring Him. And He, you know, somebody said that, you know, God will always come to a hungry heart or something like that. You know, a hungry heart, God, Holy Spirit will never turn away from a hungry heart who's hungering and thirsting after Him. He will always fill that heart. And it's written, Blessed are those who hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Like, even after you've been made righteous, keep hungering and thirsting. Someone may say, well, I have everything. Well, good. There's more. You know, if you have all the mysteries, you have all the secrets revealed to you, but you still don't have love, you're worth, like, your information is worthless. You're nothing but a noisy gong and a tinkling cymbal. That means, like, you're irritating to those who are walking in the Spirit because you're a hindrance for those who are entering in by the Spirit. You're just giving them information for their brain to puff them up and make them argumentative. Where you need to be releasing peace upon them. Be releasing rivers of living water to wash through their soul, to wash that 
junk away. Paul said, it's written like that. He's like, I count it all as done. All of his teachings, theological understanding, his doctrines, memorizing them, but all that, I count it all as done that I just might know him and be found in him. What does that mean? Everything that you've ever learned about God, who cares? Everything that God has taught you himself, that's what matters. Because that's what has life in it, to bring transformation to those around you. It's the testimony of Jesus being the spirit of prophecy, prophesying encounter into their life. Not releasing just parrots, parroting information. You start off that way, probably, most of us has. We start off just parroting everything, the scriptures and what people tell us. But then you start getting your roots deeper and deeper into, into, you know, into God. And you start receiving the, that living nutrients, the spirit watering the seeds of the kingdom in you and you realize that there's a tree of life growing up within you popping out of your branches the fruit of life the fruit of his spirit that when people who are around you don't know god will look at you and say oh surely you have been with the lord i've taken people to like meetings where i used to go and like who don't know god or are running from god or don't want anything to do with god atheists and they would have encounters with God <laughs> because I knew that the glory was there. Not the church meeting, it was like, it was called worship invasion. We would just go there to worship God. And if, if, if God led that way, there'd be like a 20 minute word, but it was usually about two hours of just nothing but worship. All the young people. That's where I got to know the Holy Spirit is through worship. And that's where you get to know Holy Spirit is through worship. Worship is fully surrendering your will, your mind, your emotions, your heart, your feelings, your body, your soul, and your spirit to the living God. Not to a doctrine, not to a denomination, but to the living God. And there's a lot of glory in that. Okay, well, i got to find something else to do. Hope these little, uh, these little talks encourage you just to press in for more. Just keep hungering. Keep thirsting, keep knocking, keep seeking, keep finding, and you'll be accelerated in just like this amazing growth. Whereas you, your words will help others grow. Your words will not be your own anymore. It'll be the Lord speaking through you, and it'll be bringing freedom to those who need to hear the words of life, to those who need to hear that God's not mad at you. The punishment went upon Jesus Christ for your sake and mine, to be free in the Holy Ghost. <laughs> God bless your face with abundance of grace. Hallelujah. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the kingdom of heaven. The testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. If your testimony of Jesus is real, it has the spirit of prophecy to proclaim that open door that you went through, Jesus Christ, is open for others around you who hear your message. In the old order, John the Baptist was considered the greatest because he would get them into the river to be baptized. But the least in the kingdom is greater than John the Baptist because the river of God baptizes through his body now. <laughs> that body you are the least. As you open your mouth, rivers of living water should be pouring through you because out of the heart the mouth speaks or out of the mouth the heart will speak. You know, who is your heart? Just, just put your hand on your forehead and say, I plead the blood, I apply the blood of Jesus on my mind and I thank you, Father, for the, for the blood of Jesus. I thank you that we have the mind of Christ and I can hear what the Spirit is saying. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you for the increase, Lord, of that presence. Now just let it just let it cascade throughout the whole world. <laughs> Jesus. I'm gonna start with this. Why I'm even making this video today. I was in a meeting and worshiping God and I had my eyes closed and I happened to open my eyes at this particular time. And I saw this girl, she was dancing, like she was trapped in a box. And then I'm like, whoa, <laughs> close my eyes. And and then whole, like God spoke to me audibly. He said, so many of my people are in bondage. What are you going to do about it? 
And uh, I was a little taken back. I'm like, what am I? Sp- I thought that's your job. I, wasn't, I didn't know I was supposed to do anything about that, you know. <laughs> and then, uh, and as I, ha- I cl- my eyes were closed, I looked into my hand and I was holding a ring of keys. Those were the keys of the kingdom. And so many of the body of Christ doesn't even know that they hold the keys of the kingdom. What are the keys of David? Worship. What does worship in spirit and truth do? Where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. <laughs> Those prison doors flung wide open when Paul and who was that Silas, Paul and Barnabas, somebody was they were worshiping in the prison, and the, the prison doors flung wide open because where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. You hold the keys. Guaranteed. A Christian without a worship life is a Christian in bondage (laughs) because the outward will just cling to you and you'll think those thoughts are your thoughts, but they're not. It's just the, it's like we live in two dimensions. We live in Christ in heavenly places far above all those things, but we also have this earthly temple in this dimension to manifest where we are in heavenly places through, but sometimes the Philistine dirt fills the well of salvation. And we can't work out our salvation because all the dirt is in the way. The flesh. So you have to continually allow those rivers of living water to be pouring through your heart, pouring through your mind, and pouring through your body, your mouth. As you speak the words of God, the double-edged sword, His word in your mouth, mixed with the spirit of faith. God, I ask that you release the spirit of grace to everyone who's pressed place so they can hear what your spirit is saying. And even myself, God. As I open my mouth, I trust you'll fill it with honey from the rock. Revelation that enlighten the eyes so we can taste and see that God is good. Hallelujah. And all things are freely given to us through because Jesus paid the price. Whoa, Shama. (laughs) So that's why I'm making this video. I want to share with you some very, very precious uh, encounters that I've had with God. God. To tell you what God is like. You know, a lot of us think that God is angry and God's like this thick, eyebrowed, angry father in clouds and ready, just ready to punish us. No, that's called a religious spirit. <laughs> it's a demon. God is not like that at all. Look at the story of the prodigal son. He went running. He probably had tears running down his eyes, rejoicing that his son came back. Rejoicing that his son repented from the worldly lifestyle of feeding in pig troughs. Because he wanted to prepare the lamb, you know, or, or slay. What, what, what animal was slay? Who cares? Whatever. He's going to feast with his father. And his father rejoiced. I feel so much peace, man. May the peace of God rule and reign in your heart. And your, set your affections and your thoughts upon him. And work out your salvation. You know that faith without works is dead? <laughs> work out your salvation. Yeah, you got saved. You got fire insurance. You, in- you invited Jesus into your heart. He saved you. Now work out your salvation into your daily life. When you do the dishes, set your affections on Him while you're w- while you're scrubbing those dishes. Just, just pray and seek Him and just adore Him. He is a door. <laughs> Adore him. Let him walk through your heart into this realm and touch people, man. <laughs> Hallelujah. That's true adorning. <laughs> Adorned with Christ. You know, in the spirit realm, you look like a rainbow, like seven spirits of God just pouring through the earth, and it scares the hell out of the atmosphere, and it goes right back down to hell where it came from. <laughs> Hallelujah. You're wearing God's covenant, man. Joseph's coat of many colors, that rainbow, that rainbow robe, (laughs) clothed in the seven spirits of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus. Oh, so yeah. Like, uh, we don't have to uh, continually sin every day. That's just a deception of the fallen, limited nature of man. And, And the only way to stop sinning is Holy Spirit nature. It's Christ nature. You can't do it in your own strength. You have to repent, forsake anything of dust and darkness, and enter into the glory. Because all men have sinned and fallen short of the glory. So what what is sin? It's just not walking in the glory. It's not walking with God. 
Jesus came to seek and to save that which was lost. What was lost? The sheep? <laughs> you know, that hundred sheep? <laughs> the 99 are safe with him in heaven, but he came to seek and to save the one that was lost. That's mankind. But it wasn't just to give them fire insurance. Salvation must be worked out so that the earth will be filled with the glory of God. It's not just being saved from hell. It's like working out your salvation so that your words have spirit and life. You're like the second Adam, a life-giving spirit. When you speak, you, you know, John the Baptist got people to the river and baptized them. But the least in the kingdom is greater than John the Baptist because we have the ability when we fling wide your heavenly gates and the king of glory will come in and baptize with the Holy Spirit and fire. When John spoke, it says that the Holy Spirit fell upon them and they began speaking with tongues. They got baptized in the Holy Spirit and fire through Peter, through Peter's relationship with God. And if other people weren't in that vicinity where Peter was, they didn't get baptized. So it's true. Like the least in the kingdom, it doesn't matter. It's greater than John. Hallelujah. You just have to be crucified with Christ and it's no longer you living anymore, but Christ living through you, where you give your life to Jesus, you give your thoughts to God, you give your heart to God, you give your body to God. You're not using it for fornication. You're not using it to sin. And if you have, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. And we just go to Him and like, just forgive me, God, I repent. Repenting is turning from sin and getting back into the Spirit of grace. Getting back into the Spirit of glory. Sitting with Him in, in heavenly places so that the things below are underneath your feet. Uh, that's what it's like to walk in heavenly places. You know, things below are under your feet. Hallelujah. The world below, the lust of the flesh, the pride of life, the, the temptations that pull upon you. You stay in your nature, the nature of Christ. And you walk in the divine nature and those things are underneath your feet. They might try to tug you down and untie your shoelaces. But you have the Prince of Peace. <laughs> You're walking in peace. Hallelujah. <sighs> Holy Spirit. Well, yeah. I want to talk about some heavenly encounters that I've had. This, there's testimonies way back there. I just, I always get so sidetracked when I try to focus on one thing. Because there's, oh man, God is so good. His presence is wonderful. The anointing. The anointing is Lord. The anointing is King. When you just like, you, you got to be like those people in the Old Testament where they take their ear. Like, I am not leaving my master. They'll take your ear and just drive it through. It's called an all or something. <laughs> if you give your all to God, I don't know. <laughs> they drive your ear to the door so that you'll always belong to your master. And that's what we need. We need to be crucified with Christ. He's the door <laughs> nailed to him. <laughs> I'm crucified with Christ to Christ. <laughs> And I only want to hear, that's why the ear is there. I only want to hear what my Father is saying. I only want to hear what the Spirit of God is saying. I have been purchased with a price through the precious blood of Jesus. I, my life is not my own. I belong to you, God. Okay, let's start talking about some of the, <laughs> the encounters I have with God because it is the spirit of prophecy. You ever go through a trial, you sin, you, you stumble. You know, a righteous man will, you know, Fall down seven times, but get back up again, whatever the scripture says in Proverbs. You know, sometimes when we sin, we invite that, that demonic condemnation. There's no condemnation in Christ Jesus, but there is condemnation in the fallen flesh. Because that's what is put to death on the cross, <clears throat> symbolically for everybody. You know, We're all in Him we die, but in Him we also rise. Hallelujah. And when you sit, like you invite all these 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 demons, and you feel the condemnation, you feel the the wrath, you feel the. Uh,